We are going to go on a step further from the uh, heart rate approximation and here we are going to describe the uh, heart rate fog approximation. We are making this uh, description in the general context and then we will apply that to the uniform electron gas. So the hardy fork approximation is based on two uh, features. Uh, first, uh, we'll consider the independent electron picture. So basically, it means that the wave function that we consider for the hard approximation is going to be described as a product of the individual electronic wave functions. But besides that, this wave function is going to be anti-symmetric, which was not the case of the heart approximation. So we need to anti-symmetrize this wave function. And we are going to do it using the Slater determinant here. So within the Slater determinant, which is that expression, we have that the wave function is anti-symmetric. And the prefactor here is the prefactor which is normalizing the wave function, considering that uh, the wave function for its electronic state is already normalized. So that's the first feature. And the second feature, as we considered in the heart approximation, we're going to apply a variational approximation. And basically, we're going to find stationary states of the average Hamiltonian considering the wave function the anti-symmetric wave function we have we have here with the constraint that as we consider in the heart approximation that the wave function has to be normalized and which basically means that as we are considering this independent electron picture that means that each electronic wave function has to be normalized so our first step is going to have an expression for that one or the average Hamiltonian considering that wave function. And that's given by this expression here. That's the expression that we have for the average Hamiltonian. Which, by the way, that's very interesting to check if you're able to get all the expressions you have, we have uh, here. And it's also interesting to have a look at the different terms arising here in order to um, understand the origin of, 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 of the, the, the ring actually. So first here we have the kinetic contribution to the, the uh, associated to the electrons, then we have the electron interaction. Here is the term which is actually pretty much the same as the one we had in the hard approximation. But it's important to remark here that here we do include uh, I and J uh, same states, which were not included in the Hardy approximation. And why we are doing that? Because it's also included in the next term here, the same term here. So here we also, in this summation here, we're also including I, J same states, and they are canceling each other. So uh, this term here, which as I've said before, is pretty much the same as the one we had for the Hardy approximation, it's called, as you can imagine, the Hartree contribution, or it's also called direct contribution. And as we consider and as we explained within the Hart approximation, it has a classical, somehow classical uh, understanding. Because when you are doing the summation over i and sigma of all these terms here, the summation coming from here, uh, we have you have that uh, doing the summation over i and sigma states, this i and sigma state summation of this term, we have the electron charge density at the R point. Again, doing the summation over j and sigma prime states coming from here. Uh, J and sigma prime states, from here you do have actually another M at R prime. So basically here you have the interaction over the whole space on R and R prime of 
the product of the two densities over r minus r prime, which is the classical contribution associated to the uh, electronic potential energy of a charge uh, distribution of density and r. So that's why this Hartley contribution has a classical understanding then. However, this second term here, which did not appear in the Hartley approximation, it all, uh, it's, uh, it's only has like um, a, a quantum, quantum uh, understanding in the sense that this term here just arises because of the antisymmetricity of the wave function we are considering. So this term here is called exchange. This is exchange. This contribution is, and it's really important. As you can see here, there are two interesting features. First, you have it's negative. And second, this contribution, it just exists if the spin states of I and J states are the same. So it's, as this is negative, so having the same state is negative, so it's lowering the energy, it basically means it's favoring states having the same spin. So somehow it favors like a ferromagnetic state, so spins aligned. Okay, now we do have this contribution, this expression for the potential for the average Hamiltonian. We are going to apply the Langrange, Lagrange multipliers uh, method. Well, for that, as we did for the Hart approximation, we are defining a function, which basically is the average Hamiltonian we did defined before, and then we have another contribution coming from the sound over the Langrange multipliers and the constraints we are considering in order to. Uh, um, consider that the each electronic wave functions are normalized. So once we have that, then we are going to, uh, as we did for the Hart approximation, we are looking for the Hart Fock approximations uh, and the sorry the Hart Fock equations. And the Hart Fock equations we're having are the ones that. Um, make the f function stationary so basically what we're doing is the derivative functional of the f function with respect to the psi uh, complex conjugate so doing the uh, this uh, functional derivative we are getting that equation this equation here which is the hartree fogg equation which, uh, as we said for the Hart equations, they look like very similar to the equations that we have for getting the, um, uh, Hamil the eigenfunctions for the Hamiltonian. So that actually we have a term which is very similar to the kinetic energy of the uh, electrons, the uh, electron ion potential energy, uh, another term uh, coming from, uh, not, then we have another two terms coming from the uh, electron-electron interaction. The first one, actually, uh, it's called a uh, Hartree uh, term, again, Hartree term, which actually was very similar, pretty much the same as the term arising in the Hartree approximation, but here we're including actually the self-interaction, so the Ji being the same, it's also included in this summation here. It does have uh, like a classical interpretation the sense that the summation over J and sigma frame states, which is given to you, is the electronic density. So this is the Hartley contribution. Then we have another contribution that, as we said before, this one is negative and it just has like a quantum interpretation. It's, it's coming just from the antisymmetry of the wave function. This is called exchange contribution. That sounds equal to uh, uh, this epsilon i, which are the Lagrange multipliers, times the wave function. Okay, that's like a, a very uh, general description of the different terms arising in the hartree fock equation. Again, this equation is extremely complex to solve. This is a nonlinear equation again, as you can see here in the product of different wave functions we have in the equation here. And besides that, this last term, this change term, is extremely complex as this is an integral differential equation because the um, 
um, this uh, wave function of the i states inserted inside this integral over r prime here, over r prime. So again, this equation is quite intractable. If hard equations were difficult, hard equations are more difficult. Again, uh, usually these uh, are solved numerically using the self constant method, as we described for the hard approximation. However, even though uh, the, this kind of approximation is used numerically, even though numerically they are uh, needed to make some approximation in order to be solved, some kind of symmetry is, has to be applied or even imposed in the system in order to solve it. They are actually very challenging. So once we have described this Hartenfock approximation in the general context, which actually can be applied to any system, even to molecules, of course, then the next step is going to be to apply them to the system we are analyzing, which is the uniform electron gas.